Welcome to Fresh Catholic, a podcast for those who are converting, reverting, or simply want a fresh perspective of the Catholic faith to help them to open their hearts and minds to become closer to the love and goodness of Christ. My daily prayer is that I will be a bright light to others, to be filled with the love and light of Christ, so that when people look at me, they see Him radiating out from me for His glory. Hello and welcome. I'm Lori Balderas, and I'm so happy you're here. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we live in quite an obsessive world. Of course, I'm being very sarcastic. Of course you notice. It's hard not to notice. The definition of obsession is an idea or thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes on a person's mind. I feel people are obsessed with the most unbelievable things. They're obsessed with celebrities, obsessed with things, obsessed with crazy fads, such as TikTok and social media. People also get obsessed with things like pornography, alcohol, drugs, and just bad behavior. I feel like one of the biggest obsessions is the obsession with self. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about what I need. It doesn't matter if I'm hurting someone else. It doesn't matter if other people are hurting or struggling. It's all about me. I know in my past, I used to have obsessions of things or fixation on things. I don't think that they were very healthy things. I don't think that they were things that were worthwhile. I don't think they were things that made a positive difference in my life. I don't think they were things that were going to get me into heaven, that's for sure. But I was obsessed nonetheless. The only maybe excuse, not excuse, is that I didn't have God in my life, or at least I didn't have God in the capacity I do today in my life. I didn't really have a good solid purpose or compass So maybe that's why I was easily obsessed with things and people. Why do people get obsessed with things? I would think a lot of it has to do with not being at peace with yourself or not feeling good and confident and secure with yourself and your surroundings. I think if you're obsessing about things, it's that you don't feel you have things you want, material things things that you think will make you look more successful or more wealthy or whatever. Maybe it's things that you want just because somebody else has them and you look at them in admiration or envy. You think if you have the same things, people will look at you with admiration. I feel like most of the time, people just want things they don't have or that seem unattainable because it's kind of like a little game. I also think obsessions fill a void that people have in their life. People have obsessions with celebrities, and they want to be like them. They want to act like them and have what they have. Or people will have obsessions with material things like bags, jewelry, cars, clothes, things that, honestly, in the scheme of life, could all be totally burned down in a fire. And then they're just ashes on the ground. They're not anything super valuable, lasting, or important at the end of the day. I feel like when a person is obsessed with something or always has to have the latest, greatest, trendy thing, in air quotes, they're always needing more and more. It's just never enough. They're never satisfied. They always buy or want the latest, greatest thing that's going to end up not really satisfying anything in their life. They will get bored and need to move on to the next fad or obsession. It's never ending. Now, I feel the opposite. I feel like I used to think I needed a lot of things and a lot of people. Now, I truly feel that less is more. I really do feel that it's quality over quantity. I really do feel that simplicity is key. In Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and decay destroy and thieves break in and steal, 
but store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. People also have obsessions in relationships. They might be obsessed with a love interest. They might become obsessed if the feelings aren't reciprocated. They might become obsessed with someone else's partner and not have the boundaries to know they shouldn't pursue that person. Anyway, I just think we all need to be very mindful of being obsessed or fixated on things that most likely aren't important in the scheme of life and don't have any real redeeming value. Ultimately, that state of mind, I believe, leads to sin. I believe jealousy and envy are also best friends to obsession, which is not good because those are sins. So what would be a better alternative to obsession? Well, I think it's devotion. I think you should be devoted to the Lord. I think you can have devotions to other things. I think you can be devoted to your spouse. I think you can be devoted to your family. But ultimately, your number one devotion and the meaning for all your life is your relationship with Christ. The definition of devotion is love, loyalty, or enthusiasm for a person, activity, or cause. Religious worship, prayer, or observance. Before I was Catholic and I was in my obsessed materialistic phase of my life, I didn't really know or realize that that was maybe a bad way to be. I was obsessed. I don't think I even recognized that I was obsessed. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying how it was. In contrast, now, the more and more deeply into my faith in the Lord, faith in the Catholic Church, now I feel so much more at peace and calm in my heart and my soul that the love and devotion I have is for something that is very worthwhile, very meaningful, and can satisfy things in my life that nothing else can. Now I have something I'm devoted to that will actually give me eternal life and get me into heaven. Because all the money in the world, all the fame and fortune, it's not getting you there. But the love and devotion you have for the Lord, the true and pure and sincere love you have for the Lord, that is the most fulfilling thing you could be doing or should be doing in your life. Every day when I go to Mass, I feel so excited to go, so happy to be there, so calm and at peace, submerging myself in the Word and in the Eucharist. It just fills me up every day. It always makes me sad for other people who don't experience this. It makes me sad that people resist the Lord. People resist church. People resist the Catholic faith or Christianity. It really deeply breaks my heart. I wish there was a simple, easy answer. I wish I could get everybody in the world to at least give the Lord a try. To at least open their heart and give him a shot. I think about it every day, how much people are resisting something that is the best medicine, the best answer, the only answer to everything in their life that's going wrong. The answer is to open your heart to Jesus. Open your heart and your mind and your soul to Jesus, and everything in your life will change for the better. It's the truth. I often think back to the times where I was resisting having a relationship with the Lord. I think back to that time and wonder, what was it that was making me resist him or not wanting to even give him a chance or a try? I'm trying to remember why I thought that way, because obviously the Lord knew exactly when and where he wanted to open my eyes, to take the scales off my eyes, to see what he actually had planned for me. We'll be right back. Rising anti-Semitism. New generations redefining how they connect with Jewish traditions. Changing dynamics among Jews around the globe. Take a deep dive into these topics and more on Mosaic. Exploring Jewish Issues. 
the podcast brought to you by the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. Hear from the thought leaders, politicians, scholars, and artists at the forefront of Jewish life today. Subscribe to Mosaic, exploring Jewish issues wherever you listen to podcasts. But I wonder why people are so resistant to this concept. I have somewhat of an idea that a lot of it has to do with past traumas or people have had bad experiences with something having to do with the church or somebody who's hurt them or harmed them in some way or somebody has been hypocritical and not been a good role model or a good guide to the religion or to Christ. I used to have people like that in my life that were repelling me against God by the way they were acting. So I get that part to some point. I wish there was something that would make people or encourage people to want to become closer to the Lord. It makes me sad for people that don't feel they can do that. It's kind of like when you know there's a certain power food or something very healthy that you knew if everybody would just eat or drink this, it would change their life. It would just make their health become so much better. That's what Jesus is. Jesus is the ultimate superfood. He's the ultimate perfect remedy in life. People are so willing to drink the trendiest drink or partake in the trendiest drug or waste hours and hours on TikTok or watch worthless TV programs when the thing that would just change their life all for the better is the Lord going to church, going to Mass, receiving the Eucharist into their body. What could be better than devoting your life to the Lord and receiving the Eucharist, which is the superfood? What is keeping people from doing that? I would say it's fear. I would say it's pride. I would say it's ignorance. And I would say it's laziness. Have you ever had a day or a weekend or even a week, where you're on vacation, or you're just laying around, lazy binging on junk food, alcohol, maybe even drugs, watching trashy TV, maybe even pornography. Do you have a period of time where you're doing these things, and at the end of that time, you have to admit, you feel pretty gross. You feel pretty disgusting. You feel pretty worthless. You have to admit it. I've had weekends like that in the past, minus the pornography, of course, and I felt gross. I felt puffy. I felt dirty. I felt worthless. That's how you feel when you do that. You're being worthlessly obsessed with yourself and bad things. But then, in contrast, have you ever had a weekend where you've spent time out in the fresh air? and you've eaten really healthy, beautiful food, and you've drank a lot of water, and maybe even had some good wine, and you've had some good naps, and you've watched some really worthwhile movies or documentaries. You've spent time with family and friends and reconnected with them. You've spent some romantic time with your spouse. You've spent some beautiful one-on-one time with your grandchildren or your children. At the end of that time, you feel beautiful. You feel healthy. You feel glowing. You feel completely just fulfilled and whole. That's how it is when you go from being obsessed with bad things in the world and yourself to being devoted to the good, to be devoted to what is healthy in your life, body, soul, and spirit. And that is coming from the Lord. Have you ever had an unhealthy obsession with something? And because you've had this unhealthy obsession, the people in your life who love you turn away from you because they notice you have this dangerous, unhealthy obsession that's going to hurt or harm your life, and you're not listening to reason. Of course, I think we've all probably had that at one time or another. Maybe not but I have. They're doing that out of love because they're worried about you. 
They don't want you to go down a destructive path. But in contrast, have you ever had somebody who, because you're devoted to your faith, you're devoted to the Lord, you're devoted to your relationship with him, have you ever had anybody turn away from you because of that devotion? I have. I find it to be very interesting. Why do people do that? I believe it's because they're afraid of your devotion. I believe it's because they maybe don't think that they can raise their bar to that. It's a threat to them that you have a devotion to something that is so pure, that is so beautiful, and because they're not interested in it, they don't want you to be interested in it or devoted to it. Well, you have to stay strong because your devotion to the Lord and to your faith, that's all healthy. Why would you want to give that up? It's not a vice. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. They're the ones that want you to lower your bar. Don't lower your bar. Keep your bar high and they can rise to your bar. If they don't, it's on them. You have to do what you know is good and healthy for your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit. And hopefully, because you don't cave to their blackmail, you don't cave to their threats, you will be a good role model by staying strong in what you know is a healthy and proper devotion instead of being a bad obsession. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do this episode on, but when I went to my Saturday morning adoration date with Jesus, the second I knelt down and thanked him for being with me and bringing me such joy to my heart, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I had this wave come over me of how much I love my devotion to the Lord. And it suddenly clicked in my head. I could feel the Holy Spirit swirling around in my head. He sent me this message about obsession versus devotion, and I just had to smile. I just thought, oh my goodness, this is my topic of the week. I just love that. I love when I get signs like that. I love when the Holy Spirit works in me like that, and I just had to laugh. I just had so many thoughts and ideas rushing into my head. And I was like, wait, wait, I have to finish adoring. <laughs> How do I show devotion to the Lord and my faith? Well, I wake up very early in the morning and I prepare my body, soul, and spirit. I attend daily mass. I read scripture. I pray throughout the day, prayers of blessing and adoration, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. I try to be of service at my church by being a lector and Eucharistic minister. I try to help people by having a kind and loving heart. I try to do my job as a wedding coordinator as best I can and draw people to the sacrament of marriage. I outwardly show my faith by wearing religious medals and my crucifix, by having my podcast, by having my social media presence. I am very clearly Jesus and Catholic focused. I'm being forced to give up family members and friends who aren't supportive of my faith and my relationship and devotion to Christ. I try to be a good example of being true, honest, and faithful. I put the Lord and my faith first in my life. I make him and it a priority. Have you ever been devoted to a person or thing or cause and they've totally failed you, they've totally abandoned you, they've totally given up on you, it's totally not worthwhile. Of course you have, because that's how all those things go. But the Lord will never fail you. Your devotion to him won't end in abandonment, ever. Humans fail. Christ doesn't. Maybe you don't have time to go to Mass every day. Maybe you don't have time to be of service at your church, but you do have time to go to Mass at least once a week. You do have time for that. You can put aside other things and make time to go to Mass at least once a week. Come on, guys. It's very important. Also, 
even if you're unable to do these things in your daily life, you can certainly show devotion to the Lord in quiet moments of your day. You can certainly pray and limit your screen time, turn away from TikTok and read the gospel, or listen to a good Catholic podcast. <laughs> you can show devotion to the Lord every day. You have time. It's just a matter of surrendering, choosing, and deciding to make it a priority and devote your heart to the thing and the person that is the most valuable. Anyway, at the end of the day and the end of your life, you have to remember that humans and things and obsessions, they're going to come and they're going to go. They're not going to be there and they're not going to be focused on you. But if you show love and devotion to the Lord, he will show you how precious you are to him. Things and beauty fade. They're disposable and fleeting, but our relationship and devotion to Christ and his to us is not only worthwhile and everlasting, it's eternal. And now some fresh Catholic news. I am so happy and grateful that I'm getting more and more listeners and from all over the world. How exciting is that? Thank you for sharing with your friends and family. I'm still hanging in at number 12 on the top 90 Catholic podcast list. Yay! I'm just a little lower than Father Mike Schmitz from Bible in a Year and also Catholic Answers. Do you think they're listening to Fresh Catholic yet? <laughs> I really appreciate the messages on Facebook and Instagram and the emails from my listeners. Please reach out to me and follow me. Links are in the show notes. I love to hear from you. Check out my website. My husband Simon has made a lot of improvements and updates. My Patreon is there as well. So easy to subscribe. The links for the Patreon is also in my show notes, so go check it out. Hey, flip-flop weather is over. Time to pull out your socks. What? Your socks have holes and aren't comfy anymore? Well, I have some good news for you. I have joined with the amazing sock company, Sock Religious. They have an awesome line of socks. Jesus socks, Mary socks saint socks something for everyone and they make great gifts father matthew and i are big fans of this sock company head to my website at the podcast tab scroll down and see the ad when you order you'll get 10 percent off so cool and may god bless your tootsies do you have a bible study church group or organization that would like me to come do a speaking event? Reach out and let's make a plan. I would love to come discuss various topics and draw more people to the Lord. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Tune in next Monday. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. Now go out and be a bright light in someone's life. And remember, be focused, be faithful, and be fresh. Fresh Catholic is produced, edited, and recorded at Wonder Mouse Studios in Ventura, California. <laughs>